Hello everyone and welcome to the first episode of Rawhammer, uh, a Warhammer 40k channel, brand new, that each episode we discuss or dive into a different part of the hobby, such as the tabletop, the minis, new releases, uh, the lore and all the other good stuff. Uh, I thought I'd start out with a, a painting video. Uh, I love the painting, uh, it's, it's a real integral part of the hobby, as you all know, um, but do we all get enough time to do the painting we want to do? Probably not. Um, my method is to not cheat as such, but uh, certainly speed the process up by uh, using you know, shades and uh, contrast paints, this kind of thing, uh, and letting uh, some paints do as much of the heavy lifting as, as, as possible. Let's have a look at Captain Messinius, shall we? Mutrium Messinius, White Consul, which is a successor cha chapter of the um, Ultramarines. Uh, there he is in all his glory. And got his pack just beside there because it's easy to paint separately because he's got a really uh, nicely detailed cape on the back there. So uh, what have I done so far to this guy? Obviously, I've assembled him. Uh, a lot of people like to uh, do their models in different parts, put them on uh, sticks and really get into those little hidden areas. Um, I unfortunately don't have time for that. So I assemble them. And for this guy, I've given him a blast with Citadel White Scar as a base and just gone over with a a two to one mix of Lamy and Medium and Null Noil to give them a really light shade and to get into some of those recesses whilst leaving the white on the model. If you go straight in with a Null Noil, it'll just muddy your, your mini uh, and uh, you'll find yourself having to pick up a lot of areas afterwards to uh, get that uh, nice uh, base colour back to each of the panels. So that's a really quick way of uh, getting that shade on but not uh, darkening your mini too much. So I hope that makes sense. So without further ado, let's get into it. Let's just move this one out of the way a minute. I've got a good idea of what we're going to aim towards. So with how it is at the moment, I really want to probably start picking out those gold areas that are, or those gold bronze areas that are a large part of the model. So we're going to get our base retributor armor and just take some of that. We're using a uh, simple basic um, Citadel layer brush here. Uh, mine are pretty battered. Someone called them the veterans collection earlier, earlier this month, which I thought was hilarious. They certainly are. So we're going to get, uh, so we're just going to get some on our brush there. A little bit snuff, mix it in a wet palette. Probably the same amount of water to that. Maybe a touch more, just off screen. But you don't need to see me mixing paints. And just nice. Maybe want to chest test it on the back of your thumb to see what the consistency is. That takes a bit of the water out of it as well. See, that's quite runny there. Just want to take up some of that water. And we're going to go into his power glove now. And pretty much uh, coat most of this power glove here uh, power fist excuse me power glove um so let's let's go for it again this is the first time i've been doing this from above so just take just take your time here uh some parts you probably want to take your time with other parts not so much but just making sure we keep more or less in the lines with this retributor armor we can go a little bit rougher around here and just pick up a little bit more paint. Off we go. There we go. Getting into all those nice little recesses. Again, got to water this paint down slightly, otherwise it's going to get claggy. Duncan Rhodes. If you've looked at him, check out his uh, videos online. Uh, he is the two thin coats guy. Made the, the saying famous 
that it's better to do two thin coats than it is one big thick blobby coat unless you are really pressed for time and maybe you're doing like a like a batch of things that you don't really care how they're going to come out on the tabletop because you know that if you're stood three feet away no one can pick up most of this detail anyway but here we are doing our best to stay in the lines keep as much paint off that piece of parchment across the bottom edge there as possible but if you, if you do make a mistake you can just grab some white scar layer paint and just brush over it so i'm gonna i'm gonna do the uh all the gold areas and i'll be right back in a moment and welcome back uh, so you can see here that i've picked up all those uh, gold areas uh, with the retributor armor uh, one thing i did do was pop his little head out uh, so i could get at the inside of his collar here uh, his armored neck piece uh, whatever the Astartes call it. Uh, so one thing we didn't do at the start, actually, which is normally the first thing we do, uh, is pick up all the little flexible joints uh, in his power armour. So just inside the elbow, uh, in the um, back and around his, his, his hips here, uh, and, and any other areas you can find. Uh, so what we're going to use for that is a uh, Black Templar Contrast. So let's just see how that goes on. Got some here, straight from the pot, bit on your brush. Uh, just make sure you're not overloading it because this will run. And so let's have a look in here. Let's have a look in there. You can move your model around as much as you like. You can just give it a light touch there and just run that into the recesses. And if you can see there, it's starting to pick up those flexi joints quite nicely. Again, you have to be perfect with this because you're not going to see a lot of this uh, when it's on the tabletop. But at a glance, you'll know that you've done those basic areas that are common uh, to uh, when you paint Space Marines. And it's it, it's just good to practice this as well. Um, the more brush control you can gain. I've got my, my forearms resting on my knees. And... And yeah, that looks a bit messy at the moment, but I'll be able to tidy that up later. And here's the easy bit. We're going to just get in behind here and run that black Templar uh, all over the back of his hip area here. And what that'll do, because it's contrast, it'll run into all the gaps and retain a few of the raised areas once it's done its work. And what that saves is you having to go in with, say, a bad and black uh, and then wait for that to dry and pick up all the high spots later with uh, edge highlighting or dry brushing, which is quite tricky in these areas. Just going to pick up a bit of. So we've got Blood Angels Red here. Really bold. Got to be careful. A lot of white around this. So let's go in and let's go top to bottom with this just touching the brush to the cord seeing how we go there that's nice just pick that up just a light touch there people because it is strong strong it's just gonna just touch that on there and it'll run into all these recesses just come down the other way there Again, just move the model around as you need to, so you can just see into all these spaces. And it's just a real light touch. Try and pick a little bit more up there. Again, see, so just getting that effect. Um, you know, again, pro painters would have a completely different approach to this. They'd be possibly using three different shades of red, possibly an orange, even a yellow, perhaps. Uh, to work up through the layers to just really make it pop. But contrast paints were made for a reason. Um, we could get underneath a little bit here. Let's just try that. And you can see it's just a, just a minute just to touch this and bring it out. We can have a little bit more there. We can be a little bit braver there. 
and just come down this side here. But again, brush control. And this is all we're going to do to this cord that's holding his cape on. Don't even have to go down to the chest plate there. That isn't too bad. That is not bad at all. Uh, so there's that. We've got these two cords coming down here that will be fairly simple to pick up. Again, um, you don't want to drown it in paint, but again, you want enough to allow it to just run into those recesses and give you that instant sort of textured effect. You've got Caliban Green or Dark Angels Contrast. Being the Dark Angels from Caliban, I believe. Uh, anyone's welcome to correct me on my law. So we are going to pick this up again with the uh, standard layer brush here and drop it in all over this tabard or, um, yeah, we'll call it a tabard. It's a bit, a bit of a sort of Dark, an dark Angels the effect. So I think the Dark Angels green is sufficient. So just, just wetting the brush enough on there it's not a big blob as you can see it's just enough to that we that we can sort of come in and see where we are with it you know measure twice cut once come in lightly and you can always put more on afterwards but it's very difficult to remove it once it's in so let's have a look let's see how this goes on uh again being bold here that's not bad that's not a bad color at all for that and because we've got the white scar base uh, you can uh, you can use any pale base really with uh, contrast but it's recommended that you use uh but sorry they recommend that you use a light base anyway you don't want to be doing a black layer and then trying to go for contrast because it, it just won't work um and you can just see there that the contrast just allows the uh un the base layer to kind of push through and you can see those those uh, edges already being highlighted. Again, uh, with layer paint, you'll probably put a layer on and then come back later and uh, edge highlight or uh, add a shade to uh, this tabard uh, just to bring out those um, those darker areas. Let's go in here, shall we? And just touch that there. Again, you will get a bit of pooling, but you can move it around for a for a period before it dries don't mess around with it too much if it if it pulls that's okay you know don't drown it um obviously because that pooling effect creates those 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 darker areas where the folds and creases are um again with with painting one of the key rules is to when it's drying not to go over it again because you can actually pull the paint back off the model uh again a lot of you will know this already and have, 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 would maybe have fallen foul of that at some point this guy himself Messinius, is from the uh dawn of fire series I can't remember how many books there are out at the moment. I think I've listened to the first two of those. And he's a character in that. Um, I think the first book was Guy Haley. Um, but if you've not listened to any of the Black Library books, if, if you are new to the hobby and you want to find out about your favourite faction, whether that's Orcs, Eldar, Tau, etc., then there are books for you. Uh, I recommend Audible. Uh, if, you, if you're not someone who has masses of time to sit down and read books, just immerse yourself with your headset on and uh, yeah, just let someone else read it to you. Uh, there's some amazing um, narrators that I, from listening to them, you, you'd think they actually understand, that you, you'd assume that they are Warhammer fans themselves. Um, because they've they, the the way that they pronounce the names of the of the characters and the places, and get the voices right, um, you can imagine what your classic uh, sort of Dark Lord voice voices like for something like you know Chaos Space Marines and 
you know, a character like Abaddon or, you know, uh, someone like Typhus and characters like this. Um, but yeah, uh, excellent. There is uh, the Caliban Green applied um, pretty much. There's a couple of, uh, couple of stray spots that could do with a little touch up. OK, uh, let's have a look at uh, this chap's belt, shall we, and buckle. So uh, we can see here that there's um, the belt that goes around here and there's a big kind of clasp in the middle there with a nice skull on. So what we're going to do, we're going to use some contrast snake bite leather, which is great for orc outfits. Um, yeah, very orky colour uh, and some rune lord brass, which is typically used on your necrons. Uh, but yeah, works really well uh, and something different compared to, you know, your normal lead belcher, um, runefang steels and obviously your, your goldy colours. So let's do our snake bite leather belt first. Again, lovely, straight from the uh, pot. Just going to give that a touch there. Again, let's, let's see. Again, it's a small area, so you don't need a massive amount, but good to get in there. And angle your model as you need to. And let's just go in, double check. Yeah, that's just gonna come around the side there, like so. It's actually come out quite lighter than I expected. So I might need a couple of coats on here, or if we don't actually mind too much. We might just stick with the one coat. Uh, let's just go over it straight away again because it's still wet, isn't it? Let's just give that like a, a touch and try and just create a little bit of texture because it is a contrast paint. Remember, if you can't see it, then you don't have to be too precious about getting into those areas. Obviously, this does have a top edge as well. So you just want to just graze it along the top of that edge there. So you're bringing out those three dimensions. Not bad. Okay, that's fine. Um, yeah, give it a touch on the other side as well, if you can get in there. Again, a little bit of manual dexterity. Uh, don't worry too much about overrunning um right that's there let's have a look at our give the brush a quick clean lovely let's go in and look at this clasp in the middle of his belt here it's already looking pretty healthy hey it's good that we've retained a lot of this white it's nice we will touch this knee up in a bit but that's going to be blue i believe uh, it's got like a, a griffin's head on it so Let's get a bit of this and again, probably one to one water. And just make sure that, yeah, that brush is still a little bit wet there. How's that going to come out? That's OK. Fine. Let's let's go for it. My, That is not a bad effect. I like that. I like that um, colour. We're going to use this Rune Lord Brass actually to cover off his uh, his pauldron here just down this line here so let's do that that might be a little bit too much paint just now let's have a go steady hand you can just hold the brush where it is and actually move the model which isn't a bad technique yeah i will mess around with the shoulder pauldron and get all that in and be back shortly see ya Welcome back. So what I've just done is the pauldron. I'll just hold up the screen a bit so you can see I've put a layer of um, the Rune Lord brass around that pauldron there. And obviously it's just underneath and in behind here as well. Uh, in the meantime as well, uh, you may have noticed it, but I didn't. There's actually a little, there might be a thigh bone uh, and obviously Astartes are huge, Adeptus Astartes or um, uh, Adeptus Primaris. And so that likely is a human bone there, a femur. So I've just given that a touch of a Shabti bone 
uh, to just give it a little sort of weathered bone colour. Simple as that. Uh, I took the uh, the green off the knee as well, mainly. Might have to give that another going over before I add the blue in a little while. Uh, so we're going to uh, go in with the lead belcher now and pick up all these other metal parts on the plasma pistol uh, and around these, these relics here as well, hanging from the belt. So let's pick up some good old lead belcher. Classic lead belcher. There it is. And just a touch of that in the mix. Touch more actually, because we've got a couple of areas to do. Again, same amount of water. And not that much on the brush. Let's touch up these areas here. So we are, this is all a lead belcher under here. Let's just touch, drag that. Again, when you when you go in with the Nuln oil later on, um, it'll help uh, sort of distinguish the where one metal starts and the other one stops. Um, so that's useful. Nuln oil is amazing. People drink the stuff, I'm sure, uh, around the top of the. Well, hey, again, I'm not going to bore this out. Some people will get like a 1.6 drill bit and uh, whiz that through, but we're just gonna we're just gonna fill it in for now, okay? Because we can, and time is of the essence. Well, you could be really cunning and uh, actually paint black circle to represent the barrel uh, where the round comes out of. Well, actually, no, we're not talking rounds here, aren't we? Because it's a plasma pistol. Um, so, yeah, you could even give that a touch with uh, some black plasma glow. But let's not worry about that too much at the moment. We'll let, we'll let the lead belcher... Uh, dictate how that looks when we come in a little bit later but that's that part there I'm just going to fill in the rest of the metallic parts on the pistol and uh, the parts around here on the on the relics with the lead belcher and so I'll be back shortly okay so that's our lead belcher applied uh, I put it on these relics here and around the body of the pistol here and all the way around there. So that's quite neat. Uh, let's jump into the cape. So being uh, the white consoles and one of the um, Ultramarines Legion uh, successor chapters, uh, we can we can pretty much lean in with an homage to uh, the Ultramarines and using some Ultramarines blue contrast. Uh, we're just going to put it all over this cape here. Um, capes are not my forte so I'm hoping that this contrast will do its work and just uh, pick out all those raised areas. So let's go for it. So yeah you need to get a good amount on here because it's a large area. Start from the top and work down. Probably start from the front actually and pull back. Let's see if we can do that and just pick up all those. Let's try and get it central here. Right in the middle there. Right into all those recesses. That's not looking bad to start with there. If you can see that. Let's just keep that going. Keep that paint moving. Don't want it to dry up and have to go over areas twice. So let's just get a bit more on there. And just draw that in. All the way across that cape. Looking pretty good. Let's keep that moving. You can see it's actually running down. You can use the edge of the brush there just to pick up that edge. And again, this won't be perfect and won't look anything like what the pros can do, but it'll be it'll be fit for purpose. And it'll you can already see that the white shining through. 
let's just go for it. Can't mess around for too long with contrasts. I'm going to keep them wet. I'm going to keep them sort of running and moving. Uh, I'm not sure if I want to pick up this edge completely here because it's a lighter shade underneath, which I was going to use some a thermic blue on. But since we started, we might as well finish. And let's just come in here. Just draw that along there, just using the edge of the tip of the brush. Again, it's not too much, too much skill involved, just a steady hand. No special techniques, just get it on. And that, let's just pick up these other areas, even though the, uh, the power pack is gonna cover up a lot of this. Just wanna make sure we don't have any obvious white spots lurking. That is fairly respectable. So love these contrasts. You can see what it's done there. It's given us an instant effect. I think I'm going to go underneath with the ethermic blue. So the ethermic blue will be on the inside of this cape here. That's also a colour that we're going to use to uh, highlight the, uh, uh, the sort of... Uh, hot part of, of the plasma pistol as well. Again, feedback is appreciated. First video out, uh, you watch all the painting videos on YouTube and you think, oh, that looks so easy. Uh, they're just there, but you know, they're keeping the model central. They're putting it in a position where the, the viewer can see what's going on. Um, they're aware of the lighting and uh, all those dark areas that can get easily hidden if you don't handle things correctly. Like right, even right now, I'm bringing it close to the screen so everyone can see. Uh, I'm fairly content with that. Once it dries, it'll look a little bit more impressive again. Um, in fact, you can even see there where it's pulled right at the bottom of the cape. So I'm just gonna just dry the brush off slightly there and just pull out a little bit of that paint. Might have dried too much already. Okay, might leave it as it is and not mess around with it anymore. So there's our cape. Okay, be right back for the ethermic blue. Okay, so here we are with our athematic blue or athematic blue. I was pronouncing it wrong. Amazing color, a friend lent me this um, and really good for highlighting any sort of uh, psychic energy as well as um, you know, like hot spots on, for example, the Redemptor Dreadnought uh, Plasma Cannon and, uh, and those other items. So uh, we're going to use it in this, in this recess here where the hot part of the plasma is. So without further ado, let's just drop it in there. Don't go crazy. You want to, you want to retain uh, the white underneath really. So it looks, so it looks like it's glowing. Just a little bit too much there. Let's have a look. So just touch it. It should just drop in like that. Top down. Don't want to go too crazy with it. And just touch it. Still haven't actually put any more on the brush yet. Because we don't want to overload it. That is not bad. That's pretty even all round, actually. It's not a bad effort. If you can see that there, just gives a little bit of a glow to that, that pistol. We're also going to use this on the underside of the cape um, because the, that's the closest colour I can get with, with what I have here. Uh, so we're going to be fairly bold with this, um, but not that bold. Let's just go in here, give it a touch. Let's just see how we go. Still too much on the brush there. Just be very careful you don't blob it all over the model. Uh, let's try and get up as high in that corner as we can for starters. Just pull that down. That is actually quite a nice undercolour. Undercolour? And just taking that there. 
and on the side of the cape. Again, you're not going to see any of that that's hit the pauldron from the top down. Let's just cover off this little bottom area here. Um, yeah, it's a little bit smudged, but this is just going to be a token uh, kind of colour here. So if someone does choose to look, at least they know we've made some effort. Just try to make it even all the way around, try and vary the kind of contrast of it. Uh, and let's go for that main part that we can see here. Let's start deep inside. And just cover that off. If you can see where I'm going with it here. A little bit more there, because so obviously it's still contrast. We still want it to run and pick up those high spots. May not look like it does on the box art, but at a glance, it's going to be there or thereabouts. So this this guy is taking shape nicely. We are wanting to. Um, pick up this this armor plate here that's on, on, on the center there. Uh, we're gonna use a bit of a thermic blue. We're actually gonna use a bit of bit of blending here now. So I'm gonna gonna gamble with this uh, because it's two tone on the on the box. It's it's the same as the cape. So it's a it's a ultramarine blue going into uh, an athematic blue. So what we can do is to go the whole thing with athematic blue and then drop in some dark shade over the top of it. Uh, and hopefully they'll merge together on the piece itself. And then we can always bring that number three out afterwards. So I'm just going to prep for that back in a sec. OK, folks, I think we're ready to do this. So let's grab some athematic blue and uh, just douse it over part of this number here. Just keeping it wet. The majority of it, the majority of this is going to be thematic blue. It's a great colour in its own right. And you could actually just leave it like that. Uh, but what we're going to do is pick up Do we like that as it is? Do we like that as it is? No, let's do it. I said I'm going to do it, so I'll do it. OK, while that's wet, it's going to take a touch of ultramarine blue here and just bring it in from this edge. And hopefully the two will merge nicely. Just touch that on there. Not too much. Just enough to hint at a little bit of dark coming in from that right hand side. And... Remember, less is more when it comes to this. So that, just maybe a touch more down here. Let's get this edge as well. How about that? Maybe just coming across slightly beyond halfway. I'm going to leave it there. So there's a little bit of a little bit of blending of colours there. Everything wet and it just comes together nicely. So this is looking pretty nice at the moment. All of this gold will really come to life when you add the null oil and the um, uh, sorry, the uh, the Reichland flesh shade at the end, and the null oil to the to the to the uh, lead belcher parts. But we're getting there, folks. Um, right. So on to uh, this knee pad here. So there's a griffin head on there, and we're going to go in and use the uh, ultramarines blue to get around that that griffin head. Again, it doesn't matter too much. If you, if we uh, get some on the Griffin head, we can always wipe that in later, just to keep it as near to the box art as we can. 
So uh, let's just get rid of that thermic blue mix, a thematic blue mix that's on there and pick up some ultramarines blue. Again, not too much because we're trying to get around that raised griffin part here. And let's see how steady my hands can be. OK, let's have a look. Again, just take it steady. Try and use the brush to the natural shape of the brush to get in around those corners. Just touch it on. I can see some going on the upper part of the knee pad here, but that's okay. We can always get rid of that with a bit of white scar. Just working around. doing this give you a bit of idea of how long this actually takes again if you do go over it's not the end of the world you just pick up a bit more white scar um, you do want to cover that whole knee panel really and there's just a little bit more down the bottom there that we can see again I'm just using a normal layer brush I'm not using the smaller one and we can just drag that out a little bit more. And that is not bad. That's not bad. I think we can just touch around there a little bit. So we've retained most of that griffin head there, which is nice. Uh, and we've taken it as far as we want to take it, really. Uh, yeah, so at a glance, that at a glance, that looks pretty good. That's not bad at all. Okay, welcome back. So what I did there was uh, I just highlighted the uh, the griffin on the uh, shoulder pad here, and time for the fun bit. So we're gonna get some Reichlin flesh shade gloss. I'd rather have the matte, but I lost it for some reason. And we're just going to put it all over the um, the gold areas and it will create like a rusted, uh, worn, uh, sort of tarnished look. Uh, I haven't done this for quite a while because I normally paint Tyranids, um, but this is going to be a treat. Let's see what happens. OK, let's just get enough there. So we've got some Reichland Flesh Shade Gloss and here we go. You can probably see the magic already and it's quite a cool technique that really adds a really nice effect there makes it look weathered and worn uh, can you see that i hope you can just how from compared to how it looked before you haven't got to go crazy with it just let it Drop into all those areas, across the knuckles there, and in and around those studs. These uh, these deep parts here, all around a power fist. That is that's nice. So I'm just going to do the rest of those areas with Reichland Flesh Shade Gloss. You can see what it does there, and I'll be right back. Hey, so uh, I've put the Reich and Flesche gloss on all of the gold areas and hopefully you can see that's got a nice tarnish look to it now. If you just check out the eagle on the leg there uh, and the pistol is looking quite good as well. What I'm just going to do now is put some uh, null oil onto the um, lead belcher areas and just to add some depth and just make it a little bit look a little bit grimy. So you can see how that's working there. Nice. Just be careful not to get any onto your plasma highlights and yeah, just in the back of the uh, pistol there. Just drop that in. See, I was just adding a few more shadows and depths. Uh, and depth, excuse me right along that edge there, look at that, not bad, then I'm going to go crazy, just a light touch, that's all you need, just 
inside the pistol grip here. And I think we've got some on those relics. Got holy relics. We got there with the terminology in the end. I can't remember what I was calling them at the start. And just around this femur bone here. Create a little nice shadow there. Add a bit of wear and tear. And obviously it makes it look like the servitors have been maintaining it. Uh, that's pretty good. We can also put some in, in the belt buckle here as well, just to create a little bit of, a little bit more, bring out a bit more of the texture. That skull in around. Oh, it's gone a bit crazy there. I'll just draw a bit of that out. Just draw that out there. Move it around a little bit. Doesn't matter if it goes a little bit darker than the rest, but we sort of want an even finish across all this stuff. That's not bad. That's not bad. So the plan for this, guys, is to give a really light um, dry brush of Bugman's Glow across the face. It's a classic skin colour. So let's just see how it goes. I've never tried this before. I'm having issues with the pot itself here at the moment. But I can just touch a bit of that there. Just the tiniest amount. And just get rid of most of it onto the tissue here. If you've never dry brushed before, this is a really great method of just bringing out all of the raised areas whilst retaining a lot of the original tone of things. So let's just see how this goes. Let's give that, let's just test this out. Just bring that a little bit closer so you can see. Just drawing that across there. And hopefully that'll start to give his face a little bit of a bit more natural colour. It's not working bad. That is not bad at all. That's sort of what we're after. Just turn him round. Again with dry brushing you want to start really light. Um, otherwise if there's a If there's a blob of paint that you've missed and you press too hard, all of a sudden you've put a big streak across the area you were trying to maintain the subtlety of. Um, this isn't bad. I think we might have to just go that way across his forehead. Let's bring out some of those raised features. It's not the best method. I would have liked a skin contrast. But unfortunately, I don't have any skin contrast paints. I certainly don't want to turn him into an orc and uh, use, you know, some vivid green or yellowy colour. I'll persevere with this. And we'll come back to it in a moment. I think once the hair is on, once we've uh, black templared his head, uh, it might look a little bit more reasonable. But this is totally fine. Back in a sec. Okay, so I've given him a, a sort of even um, dry brushing with the Bugman's Glow and started to add a little bit of Ushabti bone. Yes, I know my brush is a state. I'm waiting for the comments. Uh, just really, really light to bring it back to a sort of more, um, sort of lighter skin tone like the box art. And also just to bring out some of the highlights where the light's hitting. So I'm just gonna come down from that angle there. And hopefully this sort of skull color will some lightness and what we'll do after this is again use that mix of uh, null null and perhaps I'll use Agrax Earthshade just to bring out those recesses 
can't see a huge amount of his face because it's turned when it's attached to the model. But rather than drawing on the highlights, I'd rather keep it simple. We can do a little bit of work on the base. So we're going to grab some uh, technical Astro Granite. It's a uh, sort of like instant, instant base texture, really. Get a big blob of it there and uh, we can start to fill all the gaps in uh, around the base of the model. Uh, you don't have to do this, uh, but it just helps the the scenery that's on there to blend in with the uh, uh, with the base itself. So I'm just going to do that all the way around. It's got like, uh, what could you call it, like granules in it that uh, provide a, a textured effect. So you can just push that in there. You can even have it coming up over the, the feet of your Marine or your, or your other model uh, to make it look like they're standing in sort of, uh, you know, uh, thick dust basically. Uh, creates a nice effect. If you're going for a desert or sort of in, in, in you know, grimy industrial area. See how that's just filling that gap in there. I'm going to do that all the way around and uh, wait for it to dry back in a sec. Oh, so you can see here now that I put the technical astro granite all the way around the outside of that, uh, that base platform there. So while we let that dry, let's come back to our Ushabti bone highlight that we're trying to get right on this face here. Uh, again, uh, don't want to go too crazy too quickly, uh, but we are trying to lighten this face up, so we might have to just go for it here. And that isn't working too badly at all. I think we may have to be satisfied with just a just a hint at, at, at detail on the face because. I don't have a surefire method, foolproof method of doing faces. I would normally just do the helmet, but just wanted to keep it as per the box art. So this is going to be more of a rough highlighting job than anything. Uh, it may even look like he's got two-tone skin here. Uh, but we just have to be okay with that. Can always come back later and even add a bit of white uh, to. I'm just not sure if that wants to focus. There you go. I'm not even sure it's been focused the last ten minutes we've been doing this. Uh, some white to really bring it out. Uh, all the all the uh, all the detail. That's fine for the moment. Uh, I'm gonna stick some uh, black Templar on his hair. Uh, or maybe even some snake bite brown, uh, snake bite leather to see how that comes out. That might work a bit better with that brown. And I'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone. So we finally got somewhere like it with the face. Uh, it was a uh, dry brush with wraith bone in the end, just to sort of bring a, a pallid expression, uh, sort of uh, a pallid colour to his face and then I just went over with a, a light wash of uh, the lupus pink that was uh, watered down with uh, Lamy medium. This is such a good thing if you want to water stuff down. Don't water down paints with water if you're going to use them as a as a uh, as a wash really uh, because it becomes sort of patchy. Uh, this stuff helps to bind the pigment and uh, I would just use that. Um, but personal choice. I've just given the uh, uh, the skull uh, a single coat of Ushabti bone. Uh, I'm going to use um, this Rune Lord brass um, straight out of the straight out of the uh, uh, pot onto this razor wire here. Uh, could have just done it standard metal, but I'm just going to just blast it in there because time is of the essence now. I'm quite late here and um, we're just gonna whack that on uh, could have watered it down but really it's 
not going to cause any great great dramas if we don't. Uh, just make sure that we are getting as close to everything as we can. Um, again, just a rough sort of application of this. Again, you're not really going to see it from behind. So as long as you get coverage over most of this, you'll be in a pretty good place. Uh, no obvious bits. Just there and around there. Forgot to paint that skull at the same time. Hopefully you can see this. And that's not bad. That's okay, there's no white spots. Cool. You can always touch it up later if you want to do a little bit more. Okay, right. Bit of fun now. Um, pretty dull colour, but, you know, everything's broken, crumbling, been blasted to bits in the uh, 41st millennium. So there's rubble everywhere all the time. And uh, contrast basilicanum grey can... Uh, be really effective at just bringing out a sort of, sort of rocky rubble effect. Um, and you can always highlight it afterwards with, uh, say, Ushabdi, Ushabdi bone or, or something else to give a sort of sandy, sandy colour to it as well. So we're just going to blob this on the brush and uh, just start to work it around the, uh, the base of this. Try not to get too much, obviously, on the feet of your model. A um, little less there. Uh, just start to work that in and it just falls into all the spaces really nicely and because we've got the white scar underneath uh, you get you get instant rubble basically if you can see that um, wrong paint close that danger danger that could have been disastrous get that to one side back into the uh, silicon grey and so I'm just going to work this into all of this, all of this base here. Uh, very satisfying as you sort of see the rock come to come to life, come to the fore. And uh, I'm just going to do the rest of this and I'll be back in a moment. OK, welcome back. So what we've done is uh, added the Basilicanum Grey uh, contrast to the base that's already in existence and over the top of the technical astro, astro granite um, we've uh, we coated it white uh, and then put a layer of um, basilicanum grey over the top of the te technical astro granite as well and I've just started to tidy up the the edge of the base a little bit it'll look tidier when we're finished uh, with the skull I've just added a little bit of Agrax Earthshade. So we're just waiting for this to dry off now. And then what we'll do, we'll just get a brush and uh, bring out a sort of um, a, a, a rubbery sort of sandy effect over the top of it, just to give it a little bit more texture and not leave it so dull. So back shortly. OK, so now the Basilicanum Grey has dried all over the base. We're going to take some Ushabti Bone on our little dry brush here. Uh, again, please don't laugh at the state of my dry brush. It gets heavily used. Um, I do clean it properly. It's just a battered old thing. And uh, just get rid of most of that there. And hopefully we can just make sure that that felt a little bit wet to me. I think we can just touch the start at the back. Let's just see how this works. Just give it a light touch there and start to bring out a bit of lightness in the in the gravel all over, just so it's not such a a murky model. And I know it is the grim dark, the forty first millennium, but uh, we want our models to. really come to life and uh, combat a bit of that grim dark. It's late here, I'm starting to ramble. 
but I'm determined to get this finished. Just giving that a scrub there. You can see that's come up a bit lighter. So I'm going to go all over this model and uh, use this dry brush technique. And I'll be right back. So there we have it, everyone. Uh, Captain Mycinius. Quickish job using contrasts, shades, and uh, just focusing on the big areas. Uh, some, br some dry brushing in there. there. There's a heap more that you could do to a model like this. Uh, you could really render the face and, uh, you know, do a lot more shading, perhaps. Uh, add some highlights to the colours. Uh, there's a, there's a whole host of things you could do various things with the base um you know you could add you could add grass or you know you could make it a, a like a mars moonscape or something like that but here's just a very basic uh kind of method uh, that you've seen this evening or oh, whatever time you're watching this just a little rotation there i don't have a little rotating table but there's kind of what we're looking at um yeah, people that are really good at doing um, textiles would have a much better way of doing that cape. Um, but first video out. Similar to the box art, similar. Yep, again, that person was paid to do this. And this was just for fun and to entertain whoever's watching. Um, I hope you uh, enjoyed the video. Uh, there'll be more coming uh, and I hope that just watching this inspires you to try a couple of new um, painting techniques uh, and if you have got a model that needs painting um, then you know I encourage you to attack it and get some contrast paints if you haven't used them before and just just try try them out uh, they're really useful and they can cut down a lot of time um, you know layering up so thanks for watching everyone this is Raw Hammer and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Thumbs up.